Good afternoon, dear students. My name is Wolfovich Boris Grigorievich, and uh, this lecture was made by Elmasyan Anna Vartanovna. The topic of my lecture today is conditional sentences. First, I'm going to give you an overview of conditional clauses in English, their types, structures, and meanings. Then, I will speak about possible variations in the structure of conditional sentences of different types. And finally, I will touch upon conjunctions used in conditionals. Let us start with a brief overview of conditionals. As you know, there are four main types of conditional clauses in English. You can see a summary of them in the next slide. So here you can see types of conditional sentences. Zero conditionals describe real situations, which always happen if a certain condition stated in the subordinate clause is observed. They are used to speak about scientific facts and general truths. For example, if you heat ice, it melts. If I go to bed early, I always feel better in the morning. As you can see, we use present tenses in both parts of the sentence. In this slide, this is summed up in a short formula in blue, if plus present and then present. It means that here we can use any grammar tense which is in the group of present tenses. Conditionals 1, or the first conditionals, describe situations which are likely to happen if the condition stated in the subordinate clause is fulfilled. They usually refer to the present or the future. For example, if the weather is good, I'll go for a walk. The formula is if plus present simple, future simple. This means that in this type of conditionals, we use the present simple in the if clause and the future simple in the main clause. You should be very careful in this formula, because after if we can use only the present simple and future simple in the main clause. Conditionals 2, or the second conditionals, are also called unreal because they describe imaginary, hypothetical situations. They refer to the present or to no particular time. For example, if I were a millionaire, I would give up work. As you can see from the formula in blue, we use the past simple in the if clause and would plus infinitive in the main clause. Uh, they are called unreal because the situation that if I am a millionaire is hardly ever possible. So that is why it is referred as to unreal. Finally, Conditional 3, or the third conditional. It is also unreal, because it also describes imaginary, hypothetical situations. But this type is the only conditional type referring to the past. That is why it often expresses regrets or criticisms about something that happened or didn't happen in the past. For example, if I had studied harder, I would have passed the test. This sentence means that the speaker didn't study hard enough in the past, so they didn't pass the test in the past. 
In type 3 conditionals, we use the past perfect in the if clause and would plus perfect infinitive in the main clause. It should be mentioned that this type of conditional uh, refers only to the past and if we speculate about something, we only speculate about, about past events, so that means that we cannot do anything about this because it has already happened. Some of you may not know what the perfect infinitive is. Well, let me briefly explain this now. The perfect infinitive is a verb form is a verb form made up of have and participle to of the main verb. For example, have passed, have done, have worked, and so on. It is mostly used after modal verbs to show that the action it expresses refers to the past. In speech, you can come across various mixed types of conditional clauses. The most confusing ones are the two mixed types of conditionals 2 and 3, which you can see in the next slide. The first is used when some general situation or quality influenced a past event. So the general situation is expressed in the if clause using type 2 conditional, that is a past simple verb. The consequence, the past event, is expressed as conditional 3 in the main clause, that is using would plus perfect infinitive. For example, if Tom wasn't so easy, he would, he would have been promoted one ago. So this sentence means that Tom wasn't promoted because he is generally a lazy person. As we can see, the first part in the if clause is in the second type of conditionals, and the main part, main clause, is in the third part. The second type of mixed conditionals shows that a past event has consequences in the present. The past event is expressed in the if clause by the past perfect. This is type 3 conditional. The consequences refer to the present, so they are expressed by would plus infinitive, which is type 2 conditional. So the example here means that you invited me some time in the past, that's why I'm here now. Speaking about conditionals, special attention should be paid to punctuation. Look at these examples. If you leave now, you'll be able to catch the 5 o'clock bus, and you'll be able to catch the 5 o'clock bus if you leave now. We only put a comma between the clauses if the conditional clause comes first, like in the first example. However, if the conditional clause comes after the main clause, you shouldn't put any commas. Please be attentive in this case. Well, we have covered the basic types of conditional sentences. There are also mixed types, but I will talk about them later. Now, before we move on to more complex structures, let us see how good you are at using this information in practice. Here is an exercise for you to do. Stop this recording, do the exercise, and then press play again 
to check your answers. Exercise 1. Complete the sentences with the correct tense of the verbs in brackets. Now you should pause the video and play it again when you are ready to discuss these sentences. Now we are ready to start. The first sentence. If you make a run for it, you'll catch the train. So we use here the verb make because it's the first conditional. So we use the formula if plus present plus will. 2. If Laura hadn't eaten so much, she wouldn't have put on weight. As we can see here, here we have used the third type of conditionals. Uh, first of all, because we have would plus perfect infinitive in this main part, and also we can guess that we are talking about the past, uh, because if Laura hadn't eaten so much in the past, she wouldn't have put on weight again in the past. 3. If they have their car serviced regularly, it never lets them down. Here we have an example of zero conditionals, because all parts are equal, they both are in the present simple tense, so it's a fact, it's a common knowledge, so we have no choice, no condition, just this fact that the car should have been serviced regularly. 4. The earthquake would have caused less damage if the house had been of stronger construction. Again, uh, we are speculating about the past event because in fact there was an earthquake and the houses, the houses uh, were damaged and that is why we have nothing more but speculate about the consequences. So we used had been and we have uh, the third condition conditional here. 5. If there is a good breeze on Sunday, we'll go hand grinding. Uh, actually, it's a real condition here because uh, if uh, the weather, if a breeze is on Sunday, we'll go hang gliding. So this is the first type of conditional sentences. 6. You can get there more quickly if you take the short cut across the playing field. It's a zero type because it's a general truth. Uh, and uh, we have here no double thinking. 7. If you leave the milk out of the fridge in this weather, it will go off. Here we have a real condition, the first type, so we use present simple in the if clause, because uh, if somebody leaves the milk out of the fridge, it will definitely go off. 8. Would you contribute to the fund if I asked you? Here we have an unreal type of conditional sentences and this is the second type because uh, we are not speculating about the past, we are speculating about actually possible action but uh, it's not real one, because we don't know what the answer is, so we just ask a person about this possible action. So here we should use the second type of conditionals. 9. If I had dropped Eve's vase, she'd have been furious. It's uh, the third type of conditionals, uh, because we're speculating about the actions which 
could happen in the past, could have happened in the past, but in this case they didn't happen. Because if I had dropped Eve's vase, she'd be she'd have been furious. Only in this case. But again, we're talking about the past. So we use the third type of conditional here. Ten. If you were really my friend, you'd lend me the money. It's the second type of the sentence of conditionals, because we are not talking here about the past, we are talking about situation which in fact took place between two friends, and it seems like one of them refused to give him or her the money, and that is why this is an unreal situation of the second type of conditionals. Now, I finished my overview of conditionals, and we are going to look into the different types of conditionals in more detail. We will also stop from time to time to do exercises in order to check your understanding. I'll start with type 1 conditionals. Here we can use a variety of other patterns in both the if clause and the main cause. Let us deal with the main cause first. When we make offers and give instructions and advice, we can use an imperative in the main cause. For example, take another sandwich if you are hungry. Moreover, we can use modal verbs in the main clause. For example, if you have finished the test, you can leave the room. Now, let's move on to the if clause. Here we can use the following patterns. Instead of a present tense verb in the if clause, we can use be going to in spoken English. For example, if I'm going to catch the bus, I'll have to leave now. We don't usually use will in if clauses. However, we can use will in the if clause in the following cases. When we talk about the result of something in the main clause, let us compare the sentences. Open the window if it will help you to sleep. So, helping you to sleep is the result of opening the window. You can also say if it helps here. It won't be a mistake. And, I will be angry if it turns out that you have lied. Here, you can't say will turn out here because turning out that you've lied is not the result of being angry. So the first case here is the result. If you have a result, uh, you have the right to say will in the if clauses. If there's no result, you are not allowed to use it. We can use will in the if clause to show that we strongly be disapprove of something. In this case, will is stressed in speech. For example, I am exhausted. Well, if you will go to bed so late, I'm not surprised. Here, will is used to show the disapproving of a uh, character B in this dialogue because uh, he is just he is disappointed by the fact that his friend for example or relatives is exhausted and uh, he says like there is nothing to be surprised with because you are going to bed so late and finally 
we can use will in the if clause to mean if you are willing to. This usually occurs in requests. For example, if you will take your seats, ladies and gentlemen, we can start our meeting. So, uh, it's uh, a polite way to say something. For example, if you will drink it, you will feel better. So, all in all, we can use will in if clauses in the three cases. The first one is the result, the second uh, disapproval, and the third uh, in the meaning of if you are willing to. Now, before we continue, let's do an exercise to check understanding. Stop the recording to do the exercise and press play when you are ready to discuss the answers. Are the underlying parts of sentences correct? Correct the ones that are wrong. Now we are ready to start checking. In the first one, we can't say if I will press this button, so will should be omitted, and we have if I press this button, will it start to record? We use it because there is no any result. We don't strongly disapprove of something, and we don't mean that something or somebody is willing to do something. So we have no reasons to use will in this if clause. 2. You're welcome to borrow my old bike if you think it will be of any use to you. It's okay, because we have a result here. So, and the result of uh, taking his bike is that there will be any use for this person. 3. If he won't resign, the Prime Minister should sack him. This is okay, it's possible, because again, we here uh, have uh, the result. His action is a result of his not resigning, so as a result of his not resigning, uh, he will be sacked by the Prime Minister. 4. If the disease is or goes untreated, it can lead to brain damage. Here we have neither the result nor the disapproval, and we don't have any willings to do something. So here we are not allowed to use will in the if clause. 5. If you tell me where the vacuum cleaner is, I'll clean the house. It is okay, because here uh, the meaning of the subordinate clause is if you are willing to. So, yes, here we are allowed to do it. 6. If you complain about me, I'll get into trouble with my teacher. Here we cannot use will in the if clause, because just as in the first example or in the fourth example, we have no any other cases uh, which we have just described which would let us use this uh, rule in this clause. 7. If it will save money, I'm willing to go by public transport. It's okay, because going by public transport will save money. So, in this case, we have uh, the result here. And now, let's move on to the next pattern. We can use the present perfect in the if clause. Sometimes it is similar in the meaning to the present simple. For example, 
I'll wait till the book if I finished, or if I finish it before you go on holiday. However, to focus on the future consequences of a past event, we use the present perfect. For example, if I failed the exam again, I'm going to give up the course. The present perfect here suggests that I've already taken the exam, but I don't know the result, so if the result is negative, I will give up the course. Here is an example with the present simple. If I fail the exam again, I'm going to give up the course. It's not clear whether I have already taken the exam or not. A little understanding check again. Complete the sentences with the verbs in brackets. Use the present simple or the present perfect and give alternatives. Notice any differences in meaning when these tenses are used. So, just as usual, you pause the video and as you are ready to discuss these sentences, you will start the video again. Now, we are ready to start. 1. If you have studied Macbeth, you'll know the scene with the witches. Here we use have studied, present perfect, because it means if you previously studied Macbeth, and study refers to the future. If you leave or have left home before I get there, I'll meet you at the airport. Here we have the similar meaning as we had in the first example. 3. If you have broken the window, you have to pay for it. We use here present perfect, because I think you have broken it. Break a warning or threat about a possible future event. 4. If the taxi doesn't arrive or hasn't arrived by 10 o'clock, I'll give you a lift to the station. Here it has a similar meaning, so there is almost no difference between doesn't arrive and hasn't arrived in this case. 5. If you haven't filled in the application form, you will need to do some you will need to do so before you can be considered for the job. Here it means if you haven't done it previously, so don't fill in if you don't do it now. 6. If the antibiotics don't help or haven't helped by the end of the week, I'll go to the hospital. Here both present simple and present perfect have the same meanings. And now let's move on. In the if clause, you can use such verbs as should, happen, to, or the phrase should happen to, to talk about something which may be possible, but which you believe to be very unlikely. Happen to is common in spoken English. Should and should happen to are more formal. For example, if you happen to see Jane, give her my regards. If you should see Jane, give her my regards. If you should happen to see Jane, give her my regards. These examples show that the speaker doesn't really believe you will see Jane. They think it is unlikely. Mind, this pattern is not used in unreal conditionals. So, if we use these constructions, uh, 
we don't really believe that the action we are talking about will uh, actually re happen for real. And let's have some practice now. If possible, rewrite the underlying parts of these sentences with happen to. If it is unlikely, write x after this sentence. And just as usual, put the video on pause and then start playing it again when you are ready. Now we are ready to start. If I see Karen when I'm in Rome, I'll send her your regards. Uh, here we can say if I happen to see Karen when I'm in Rome, because it's possible, but it's very unlikely, because actually if she is abroad, or at least in another city, uh, I can hardly ever meet her to send her his or her regards. If a UFO landed in the center of London, there would be mass panic. Uh, here we can't use happen to, so we have, we should have put X to this sentence, because the author doesn't think it's unlikely. So, in this case, no way, we cannot use happen to. 3. The plan for a new airport to be built outside London is bad news if you live nearby. Uh, we here can say if you happen to live, because uh, it's possible but unlikely. 4. If I was the President of the United States, I would order its nuclear weapons to be destroyed. Here we should have put X because actually we don't think it's unlikely. So in this way uh, we are not allowed to use happen to in this construction, in this sentence. 5. If you are in the south of Spain next week, there is a good chance of seeing a total eclipse of the sun. Here we can say like if you happen to be in the south because the speaker thinks that it's possible, but probably unlikely. Well, let's move on. Sometimes conditional meaning conditional meaning can be expressed without an if clause whatsoever. An imperative and the coordinator OR are used instead. For example, look at this conditional sentence. If you don't eat less, you will get fat. The same meaning can be expressed by the sentence, eat less or you will get fat. Now I will speak about the different patterns for unreal conditionals. The first thing I would like to touch upon is the usage of was and were in type 2 conditionals. Well, we can use were after any subject in the if clause, both singular and plural. For example, if I were a millionaire, I would give up work. So, as you can see, despite the fact that we usually know that after I we use was, in if clause we can use both singular and plural form of the verb to be. This form refers to the imaginary present or future rather than the past. In modern English 
It is generally used in formal contexts. In everyday conversation, we would use was. If I was a millionaire, I would give up work. So, in colloquial language, it's uh, more common to use the form was, but we also can use uh, were if we refer to imaginary present or future, rather than the past. The only exception is the phrase, if I were you, which is used to give advice. It is a cliché. So, in it, we always use the plural verb. If I were you, I would tell him the truth. Only in this case, we have no other options but to use were after I. The first pattern I would like to point out is the structure were plus to infinitive. We use it in type 2 conditional clauses instead of the past simple to suggest that the future situation in the if clause is unlikely to happen. In other words, this structure makes a second conditional even more unlikely. Compare the two sentences on the, on the slide. If the technology became available, we would be able to expand the business. This is the usual structure of conditional 2, and here it shows that this situation is imaginary. Now let us see the, the second example. If the technology were to become available, we would be able to expand the business. The pattern were to become shows that it is very unlikely that the technology will become available. Mind that this pattern is not used with state verbs. The usual pattern, that is the past simple, is used instead. So we use this structure, I mean where to, where plus to infinitive, with the second type of conditional clauses or instead of the past simple, when we want to suggest that the future situation in the if clause is unlikely to happen, so when we want to make uh, this uh, second conditional even stronger, even more unlikely. Let us practice using this pattern now. Complete these sentences. If possible, use the pattern were plus to infinitive. If this is not possible, use the past simple. While doing this exercise, try to explain why you, you have chosen this or that variant, why it is possible, why it's not possible. Just as usual, Pause the video and play it when you are ready. Now we are ready to start. 1. If they were to hold an election now, the Democrats would undoubtedly win. In this case, we can use were plus to infinitive because it's possible because it's unlikely to happen so uh, there is a real possibility that the democrats would win now two if i doubted his honesty i wouldn't employ him in this case we cannot use this structure because as i have mentioned above this pattern is not used with state verbs and instead we use our usual pattern with the past simple so here we cannot use the structure were plus to infinitive 3. 
If all cars were to switch to gas, air pollution levels would fall dramatically. It's possible, but rather unlikely to happen, so that is why here we are allowed to use these construction, these patterns. 4. I'd sell the house immediately if it belonged to me. Again, just uh, in the second example, we have a state verb here, so we are not allowed to use this construction here. 5. If I understood Chinese, I'd do the translation myself. Again, just in the previous example, we have here a state verb, so we have no permission to use the pattern word plus to infinitive in this sentence. 6. There would be no cinema in the town if the audience were to close. Well, uh, here we are allowed to use this structure because of uh, the fact that audience uh, may be closed, it's possible, but it's unlikely to happen. So in this case, we are allowed to use this structure. And now let's move on to the next pattern. The second pattern is, if it was not for plus noun phrase for conditional to, and a similar pattern if it had not been for plus noun phrase for conditional three. For example, if it wasn't or weren't for Claire, I wouldn't be here now. This is conditional to. If it hadn't been for John's help, I wouldn't have coped alone. This is conditional three. This pattern is used to say that one situation depends on another situation or a person. It is translated into Russian если бы не. Если бы не Клэр, меня бы здесь не было. Если бы не помощь Джона, я бы не справился один. We can also use a clause after this pattern like this. If it was not for or if it had not been for plus the fact plus that plus clause. For example, if it wasn't or weren't for the fact that Claire would be offended, I wouldn't go to the party. So we have here, если бы не факт, не тот факт, что Клэр будет обижена, я бы не пошел на вечеринку. So Claire, uh, Claire's, Claire's reaction here is important for him. The patents, the patents I have just mentioned can be reduced to the structure but for plus noun phrase. It has the same meaning and is also translated as если бы не. For example, but for Claire, I wouldn't be here now. This is conditional to если бы не Claire, меня бы здесь не было. But for John's help, I wouldn't have coped alone, conditional 3. Если бы не помощь Джона, я бы один не справился. These patterns are commonly used in English, and their structure is very interesting and uh, useful. So if you, write, if you are writing any essays or compositions, it would be very nice if you used this structure to show your knowledge of using English. And now let us practice using these patterns.
Write new sentences with similar meanings. Begin with the words given. For example, Paul comes from a rich family. Otherwise, he could not have gone to the UK to study. So, we got the first, the original meaning of the sentence. So, we have, were it not for the fact that he comes from a rich family, Paul could not have gone to the UK to study. Если бы Пол не происходил из богатой семьи, Пол бы не отправился бы в Соединенное Королевство учиться. So, just as usual, put the video on pause and then play it again when you are ready to hear the answers. Now, we are ready to start. It's only because he is a professor that anybody pays any attention to him. And we are asked to start with if it wasn't. So, the variant of transforming this sentence is the following. If it wasn't for the fact that he is a professor, nobody would pay any attention to him. Если бы не тот факт, что он профессор, никто бы на него бы не обратил и внимания никакого. Two. His happiness would have been complete except for anxiety over Bridget. And again, we're asked to begin with if it were. So, as a result, we get if it were not for his anxiety over Bridget, his happiness would have been complete. Если бы его если бы не его взволнованность в отношении Бриджит, его бы счастье было бы полным. 3. The weather was terrible. Otherwise, we would have gone walking this weekend. And we are asked to begin with if it had. So, as a result, we have If it hadn't been for the terrible weather, we would have gone walking this weekend. Again, we have the translation here as если бы не. So, if it hadn't been если бы не ужасная погода, мы бы отправились прогуливаться пешком сегодня на этих выходных. 4. The strike would probably still be going on if the government hadn't intervened. So, we are recommended to start here with were it, and as a result, we have were it not for uh, the intervention of the government, the strike would probably still be going on. Again, we have the same meaning here, если бы не вмешательство правительства, забастовка уже бы возможно бы еще бы продолжалось бы. Five. The fight could have got out of hand if the police hadn't arrived. And again, we are offered to begin with had it. As a result, we have had it not been for the arrival of the police, the fight could have got out of hand. Again, the translation is the same here. So, если бы не прибытие полиции, или если бы сама не полиция, uh, драка могла бы вообще выйти из-под контроля. Everything was quiet except for the sound of birds singing. And here we are offered to use but for. So we have but for the sound of birds singing. Everything was quiet. Если бы не звук поющих птиц, все было бы тихо. And now let's move on to the final pattern. The final pattern I would like to talk about refers to both real and unreal conditionals. 
When the first verb in a conditional if clause is should, were, or had, we can leave out if and put the verb at the beginning of the if clause. Look at these examples. If you should require further information, call this number. So we can say, should you require further information, call this number. If she were to find out the truth, it would be embarrassing. Were she to find out the truth, it would be embarrassing. If they hadn't rushed John to the hospital, he would have died. Had they not rushed John to the hospital, he would have died. So in this case, uh, we use inversion here, and we put uh, the first verb in the if clause, like should, or were, or had, on the first place in the sentence. And again, a bit of practice. <laughs> Write new sentences with similar meanings. Begin with the words given. For example, consult your doctor again if the symptoms remain 72 hours after starting the course of the medicine. Uh, as a result, we have should the symptoms remain 72 hours after, st after starting the course of the medicine, consult your doctor again. То есть, если симптомы сохранятся, останутся 72 часа после начала курса лекарства, проконсультируйтесь с вашим врачом снова. Just as usual, pause this video and uh, play it again when you are ready to discuss these sentences. Now, we are ready to check. You would know what you have to do for homework if you had not been absent from school on Friday and were offered to begin with had. So we have. Had you not been absent from school on Friday, you would know what you have to do for homework. Если бы ты не отсутствовал в школе в пятницу, ты бы знал, что тебе нужно сделать в качестве домашней работы. Claire would have been able to stay with her friends if they were still living in Brussels. Here we again were offered to begin with were, so we have. Were Claire's friends still living in Brussels, she would have been able to stay with them. Если бы друзья Claire жили бы еще в Брюсселе, она бы еще смогла с ними остаться, то есть у них остановиться. 3. The shop would not have had to shut down if the workers were prepared to accept a wage cut. Here again we are starting with were and we have were the workers prepared to accept a wage cut, the shop would not have had to shut down. То есть, если бы рабочие были готовы к тому, чтобы зарплату резали, магазин бы, не, не, магазину бы не пришлось закрыться. 4. We shall have to reduce the number of staff if the company's results do not improve. And we are starting here with should. Should the company's results not improve, we shall have to reduce the number of staff. То есть, в случае, если результаты компании не улучшатся, мы должны будем снизить количество персонала, рабочих. 5. I might, I might have considered taking the job if the salary had been higher. And we are starting from head here. Had the salary had been higher, I might have considered taking the job. Если бы, работа, если бы зарплата была бы выше, 
я бы, может быть, и рассмотрел бы принятие этой работы моей. So, these constructions are quite often used in English, so it's a very good opportunity to show your knowledge of English using this. Uh, not very common for elementary speakers constructions. And now I've come to the final part of my lecture, the conjunctions used in conditional sentences. Well, you all know the conjunction if. It is the most common conjunction to introduce conditional clauses. But there are many other conjunctions to speak about hypothetical situations. Some of them have differences in meaning, and that's what I'm going to speak about now. And let us start with in case. It is translated into Russian as в случае если. It is used in real conditionals to introduce a future situation which you think is likely to happen. So keep it in mind that real conditional and it is likely to happen. For example, take an umbrella in case it rains. So this is real conditional. So there is a real possibility that it can rain. So one uh, have, has to take an umbrella. The mistake some Russian speaking students make when using this conjunction is adding the word if to it. For example, uh, Take an umbrella in case if it rains. This is a mistake. Don't use it, please. Because we have, we already have a subject here and we don't need if. Uh, actually, why does this happen? Uh, just try to translate this example into Russian and you will see why. Возьми зонт на случай если пойдет дождь. Uh, the word if appears in an English sentence under the influence of the Russian language. So here we have a language interferation, языковая интерференция, uh, when one language interferes into another language. So please do not use if in such sentences because it will be a mistake. The next conjunction is unless. Unless is used with a positive verb, as you can see, and is translated as если не. It is used in real conditionals too. Unless is a negative word. This means that the verb after it should be positive. We have, because we don't have a double negation in English. For example, unless we expand captive breeding, many more animals will die out. Pay attention that unless is not used in unreal conditionals, if not is used instead. And coming back to our example given, We can translate it, если не расширить нашу э, породу, так сказать, да, и кормежку, э, гораздо больше животных умрут. Uh, the conjunctions provided, providing, on condition that, are translated into Russian as при условии что. You can see how to use them in a sentence from the example on the slide. I am in favor of zoos provided that, or providing that, on condition that the animals are well looked after. 
То есть мне нравятся зоопарки, но только при условии, что животные за ними, что за животными ухаживают. The conjunctions so on as, as one as, mean only on condition that, and are translated accordingly, только при условии что. For example, I can lend you the money as one as, or so on as, you promise to pay it back tomorrow. Я могу тебе отложить деньги только при условии, если ты мне пообещаешь вернуть их завтра. The conjunctions suppose, supposing, imagine are translated, допустим, предположим, представьте себе, что. Supposing you fail the test, what will you do then? And or, suppose they were to lower the price, would you buy the car then? Imagine... You won a million dollars in a lottery. What would you spend it on? Предположим, представьте себе, что вы провалили тест. И что вы теперь будете делать? Или же, предположим, они, если они понизят цену, ты бы купил машину тогда? Представьте, что вы выиграли миллион долларов в лотерею. На что бы вы их потратили? So, all in all, all in all, now you know that besides if we have uh, more conjunctions in case, which is usu usually used in real conditionals to introduce a future situation which you think is likely to happen and which is translated to случай если, unless which is used also in real conditionals and is translated yes linear and unless is a negative word so the verb after it should be positive also we have conjunctions provided providing on condition that uh, which are translated into Russian as при условии что then we have so on as as one as Uh, which mean only on condition that and are translated только при условии что and we have the conjunction suppose, supposing, imagine that are translated допустим, предположим, представьте себе что and uh, let us round our lecture off with one more final exercise Complete the second sentence so that it has a similar meaning to the first sentence using the word given. Use between two and five words. Do not change the word given. For example, we have the initial sentence. She has to do this herself because she doesn't have a secretary. And we have the verb have. So we realize that we need some construction uh, where the verb to have is unchanged so we just make a sentence she wouldn't have to do this herself if she had a secretary so we have completed all the conditions which are described in the task now you have to pause the video and play it again when you are ready to discuss the answers Now we are ready to start. 1. I'll let you borrow my laptop if you promise to be careful. And here we have uh, the word one. We know that we have just covered the structure as one as and so on as. So we'll just have to see how can we can put this structure into this sentence. And as a result, we have, you can borrow my laptop as long as you promise to be careful. So we have 
put only five words we haven't changed the word given so we have uh, done this sentence correctly 2. I can't help you with your homework because I'm not very good at maths and here we have to use uh, the word could and uh, we have the second type of conditional here if I were better at maths so perhaps we could use could uh, as a modal verb to complete this conditional so as a result we have if I were better at maths I could help you with your homework 3. If we win the elections we will build more schools so and we have here the word provided uh, we we already know the conjunction provided, providing on condition that so now we have to think how to put this word unchanged in the sentence and not to use more than five words as a result we have we'll build more schools provided that is optional here we win the elections при условии что 4. They won't let you into the theater without a ticket uh, The conjunction we need to put here is unless We know that unless is a negative word uh, which is translated as yes linear So we have the following they won't let you into the theater unless you have or unless you have got or unless you've bought a ticket all these three variants unless you have unless you've got and unless you've bought a ticket are possible here 5. bring your sun cream Bring your sun cream because we may decide to go for a swim. Here, uh, the only word we have here is case, and we already know uh, the conjunction in case. So, as a result, we have bring your sun cream in case we decide to go for a. It seems like here we had walk. So bring your sun cream in case we decide to go for a walk. So well, this is the end of this lecture. I hope you found it interesting. I wish you success in your study. Be healthy, stay cool, and see you next time. Thank you for your attention.